Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode. This one I want to talk about how to get clients for web development. And some of this stuff is things I've talked about before, but I wanted to sort of put this all in one ep episode and, and do, uh, address this specifically. So that's what we're going to do here. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a portfolio. It's sort of the obvious the thing that you probably know, but just to sort of reiterate, you need to have a portfolio. I mean, in my experience, it's 90% of the time, it's the first thing that someone's going to ask you for because they want to see what kind of work you're capable of. And a, a good portfolio can do 90, 95% of the selling for you. So you want to build a portfolio. You want to build a good portfolio. Uh, you want to make sure it's relevant. So what I mean by relevant is whatever services you're offering, you want to make sure it's highly relevant uh, to those things. It's full of items that are those things, whatever it is that you are you happen to be building. So if you're building Android apps, you should have a portfolio of Android apps. You also want to make sure it's visually appealing. You know, again, I've I've said this in past episodes, but people judge books by their covers. No matter how much we aren't supposed to, we do. And so the more visually appealing you can make it, the better. Uh, and you want to make sure it's also your best foot forward. So a portfolio is not about volume. Most clients are not going to look through your entire portfolio. They're going to pick little things here and there, things that catch their eye, and they're going to look at those. So you're going to make sure that one thing that they might click on and look at in detail is your best work. So you don't want to just put a hundred things in your portfolio, some of them good, some of them bad. You, It would be way better to have five items in your portfolio and all of them be really, really good. So again, make sure it's your best foot forward. Now, my pro tip here, again, for those of you who've who've listened to 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 the show for a while, you'll know this, but if you don't have a client history, this is the biggest thing that people ask me about or, or sort of object when it comes to portfolios is not having any, anything to put in there. If you don't have a client history, just build sample sites, example sites or example applications, whatever you're doing, build things purely to put in your portfolio because having those things in there is better than nothing. Do not think that it is okay to go out with no portfolio. Build Build things for nobody if you have to in order to put something in your portfolio. You need to have something in there. It is the number one thing that clients are going to look at uh, and ask for when it comes to uh, web design, web development work. So again, that's sort of my pro tip. Make sure and have that stuff in there and do sample stuff for nobody if you have to. All right, the next one is referrals. So referrals from other people, are the, they're sort of the easiest sale that you're going to make because the potential client comes already sold to you. So it, it, it's really, really simple. I mean, most of the referrals that I ever got, I really never did any selling. They already came to me wanting to hire me because the person who referred them to me did all the selling for me. So they're, it's really, really simple. But the big question is, well, how do you get referrals if you have no current clients? And there's a number of things that you can do, but one of the things that I think is really, really simple that you can do is to do strategic free work okay and what i mean by that is don't just do free work for anybody right if you have a you know a brother or a sister or a family member who wants you to do free work for them and you want to do that to put it in your portfolio by all means but if they don't know anybody that is going to want to build a site a site or an application like you want built right if they're not someone who who is you know maybe in the business world or in the industry that you want to target or whatever don't expect going into that that they're going to be able to give you a quality referral. They don't know people uh, like that, so they're not going to be able to do it. So that's what I mean by doing strategic free work. If you can find somebody that's in the industry that you can contact or that you know or, or whatever, and you can do free work for them, and then they know all these other people who might want similar things done, then that's the kind of free work that's worth doing because that person actually has a network of people that are pot potential clients for you that they could refer to you. So again, you can do strategic free work or it may just simply come down to you need to grind out that first client. But the larger point that I wanna make here is that whatever you do to get that first client, focus heavily from that point forward on getting referrals. So doing really good work so people want to refer you, you know, actually asking people 
for referrals or if they know anybody else that that might be interested in the kind of services you do if you do good uh if you do a good job then a lot of people aren't going to be uh, they're going to be okay with 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 doing those referrals or, or referring others to you so don't be afraid to ask do a good job so they want to and and really focus heavily on that at the beginning because that's how you're going to get a lot of your work now my pro tip here is prime the client to give you referrals up front by sort of telling them your story, especially if you are working with other business people and 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 these they're established business people, sort of take the role of, you know, a lot of established business people, they want to help young entrepreneurs. They want to help people just getting started out. And so they will sort of start to take on this mentor advisor uh, type role. And it can be easy to get annoyed by that and sort of push back against that. Uh, especially for people in web development, because we all know we're really, really smart and we all know already know everything. But what I would advise is you actually take sort of take the mentorship, even if you already know this stuff, even if you don't care about what they have to say, to get them in that mode of trying to help you out and then, you know, telling them that one of the best things that they can do to help you out is to give you a referral. So if you can get people kind of going down that path already, it makes it, it it easier. So sort of tell them, I'm just starting out. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to build up my portfolio. I'm trying to build a network and get referrals and, 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 and so forth. And that'll kind of prime the pump of them later on down the line, either them offering to, to refer others to you or when you ask them being much more open to it. So again, it's all, all sort of rests on you doing good work, but that's one way that you can sort of prime that pump. All right, the next thing then is freelancing sites. So, you know, there's freelancing sites out there like Upwork or Freelancer, Fiverr, and all these other ones out there that get, a lot of these get thousands of new projects posted to their site each day. If, you know, hundreds, if not thousands, there's a ton. So there's lots of work there and they can be a really good place for you to grind out those first few jobs and build your portfolio. No, you're not going to make as much money as you probably want to make. You're not going to make as much money as you would make if you were getting clients through referrals or off your own network or off your own website or whatever, right? It, it, these sites are not about that. These sites, in my opinion, are about sort of grinding out uh, those first few clients, getting the referral started, getting portfolio built. And, you know, there's some of them that you can, you know, you can sustainably get work from, but you should always be looking to sort of build build something outside of those. Now, my pro tip here is that the key with these things is to digging is digging into how they work and understanding that these these platforms have sort of a a, a certain code to how they work. And and you really want to to try and crack that code because if you can crack that code and and, and understand the technology behind them, then uh and get them sort of tilted in your favor, then they can start sending you more work than than you know what to do with. And and just a little bit of an aside here, this is sort of what happened to me with Upwork. I, I got to the point where I was getting 20 to 30 new job invites a month in a niche where there wasn't it wasn't saturated. So I was one of the few people actually in operating consistently in this niche. And I was getting 20 to 30 new job invites a month. And I could only accept maybe one to two because these were for larger projects. So I had much more work than than I could ever handle. And it all happened once I figured out how Upwork worked and I tweaked my approach. You know, things sort of just got crazy for me from there. So again, these sites, when, when you figure them out and you crack that code, they can really send you uh, a ton of work. Now, if you want to learn what I did over on Upwork to make that happen, that's what I teach you in my freelancing on Upwork course, and you can get no cost access to it over on Skillshare. You just go to upwork101.com. You can learn all about uh, the course, see all the reviews and everything, and you can get that no cost link. So again, that is upwork101.com. All right, the next thing then is one I don't necessarily see people talk about as much, uh, especially in our industry, but it's local business groups. So this actually, I came across this purely by chance. My older brother got into insurance and in the insurance industry, these meetup groups are huge. It's basically sort of a requirement for new shirts, uh, new insurance agents. And so he got into all these different business groups and sort of, and you know, wanted me to go along with him. So I joined up to, to a few of these. And what I learned uh, very quickly was that 
when you are someone who is familiar with technology and you're in a business group of realtors and insurance agents and people who generally tend not to be very good with technology, you become a hot commodity very, very quickly. And almost from day one, I had people sort of approaching me about helping them with websites or talking about uh, talking with me about their websites, uh, website ideas and, and getting to the point of wanting to hire me uh, to to build websites for them. So if you're someone who's good with technology and you get in one of these business groups or multiple of these, like it can turn very, very quickly. Now, my pro tip here is, you know, you want to find a smaller group that only allows sort of one person per industry. A lot of groups do this. They'll only allow one insurance agent. They'll only allow one realtor, one web developer, etc. If you can get in one of those groups, a group of a small one of 20 to 30 people, uh, which is about the size of the the one of the ones that I was in where I got the most offers, right? a group that small can be more than enough to jumpstart your career because a lot of those people, it can be a high percentage, 50, 75, 80% of those people can want to uh, have you do something for them uh, uh, web development wise. So it can be a really quick and easy way to start getting work and then build referrals from that. And because those groups are business meetup groups, they're sort of prime for referrals already. Like you can start to get a ton of referrals from that kind of thing and build up your portfolio and so forth. So uh, again, business meetup groups, they can be a really, really uh, good way to get going uh, and getting getting work. All right, the fifth one here then is content marketing. And I'm just going to keep this one really brief and say, go back and watch this video again if you want a first class lesson in the what, how, and why of using content to sell your products and services. So I'll leave that one at that. All right, so that'll do it for this episode. If you liked this episode, I'd appreciate if you'd support the show. You can do so over on Patreon. When you do, you can just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. You'll, get at, you'll see all the perks you get access to uh, as a supporter over there. All my official courses, unofficial courses, unreleased courses, videos, source code, tutorials, pretty much everything. That's sort of my brain dump. Uh, you get access to all of it at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Or you can take all my official courses at johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. The benefit there is, one, you can get started for nothing over there uh, with the two-month free trial I can give you as a teacher. Uh, so you can pay nothing to get started over there. Plus, you get you get access to all my courses, but 21,000 plus other courses that you get access to as well. So you can take all the courses you want. Cancel any time before that two months is up and you'll never pay a penny. So it's a really great way to get access to the training that you want and need without having to spend an arm and leg to do it. So again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.